Come on. Come on, get in here. Oh, hi. So you're thinking about getting an electric car, but may be apprehensive about how you would charge it. You know all too well how to refuel your fossil car. Drive to a gas station, fill up your car, pay a lot of money. I suspect not anything you would miss. You've probably heard about government and private programs to build out the public charging infrastructure for electric cars. But there's a good chance you haven't actually seen any of those charging stations. Are they only along highways? Are there any near your house? Should you wait to buy an EV until after the public charging infrastructure is built out? You may also have read about or seen videos on charging. People driving electric cars until they run their charge down to zero and then showing how long it takes to charge them up to 80% or 100%. Now we know that most people drive their fossil fuel cars until the tank is almost empty and then find a gas station to fill up, if they can. A million Americans run out of gas every year, according to the American Automobile Association. Talk about range anxiety. Do you also do that with EVs? I mean, drive until the battery is almost empty before charging. If you've been doing research, you know there are a number of public charging companies and perhaps are concerned by the several different methods of connecting and how your charge is calculated. Do you pay with a credit card or need a special membership pass to start charging? Or can you just plug in? You've also probably heard that charging power is important Lots of numbers. Is bigger better? The best charging EVs can charge it up to 250 kilowatts or more and charge at 800 volts versus 400 volts. Did you see something about 500 amps? Is that good? And those public DC fast chargers, 50 kilowatts, 150, 250, 350 kilowatts. Bigger number means faster charging? How about charging curves? Oh, you have to know about those. Pumping gas seems simple by comparison, if a bit of an ordeal. But wait, a majority of people don't drive more than 30 miles a day. And the vast majority of EV owners charge at home, in their garage or driveway. If that sounds good to you, there's more. At the beginning of this video, you saw me plug in my Tesla Model Y. Although if you blink, you may have missed it. I use what's called a level two charger. The box on the wall is technically called an EVSE, or Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. Or call it a charging station, or a wall box, or call it Fred or just call it a charger, even though technically the actual charger is inside the car, a device that converts the alternating current from the house into the direct current that feeds the battery. A charging station is level two if it uses 240 volt alternating current, if you're in the US. Your house uses both 240 volts and 120 volts power. The direction of electron flow in the wires with alternating current reverses 60 times per second, 50 in Europe, back and forth versus the electron flow with direct current, DC, where the flow is always in one direction. So to continue this little Greek theater aside, electricity flowing through a wire is a lot like water flowing through a hose. Voltage is like the water pressure, while current is like the volume of water flowing through the hose. Okay, back to the play. I typically charge at 16 amps current. 240 volts times 16 amps equals 3.8 kilowatts of power. 
a far cry from the 250 kilowatts that many DC fast chargers can put out. Nevertheless, charging at 16 amps for 6 hours adds 22 kilowatt hours to my battery, good for 85 miles of range. Sometimes I even dial my charging power back to 12 or 10 amps, or raise it to 20 amps. And I can do that from the Tesla app while checking my solar system output. My EVSE is on a 30 amp breaker, so it can charge up to 24 amps. But I've never found the need to go that high. No doubt some people would. Another aside, circuits that carry electricity for a long continuous period are only allowed to carry 80% of what the breaker is rated for. This is because the wires can heat up to dangerous levels over time versus circuits that only carry current intermittently. So, even though my charger is on a 30 amp circuit, I could easily just use a 20 amp breaker, 240 volts, to charge my car at 16 amps. If your house is older and has limited electric service, or no room in the panel for new circuits, it may be expensive to add a 40 or 50 amp breaker for a car charger, or especially expensive to upgrade the service with a new panel. Yet another aside, if your panel doesn't have a free space, you can swap a standard 240 volt single circuit breaker for a double breaker that puts two circuits in the space of a single. I've done that here in this sub-panel. I normally charge my car up to about 80% and then plug in when that drops to about 60 or 70%. So I typically add just 20% or less of battery capacity when I charge, sometimes more when I drive more than usual. I get my electricity for my solar system. So charging a little every sunny day works out better than waiting and trying to charge the whole battery all at once, especially if that lands on a cloudy day. You can do the same thing at night if you're away at work during the day. That is, charge every day or every night. When I use grid power, I program the car to start charging at midnight when rates are lower assuming you've driven more than a few miles since your last charge, and you charge at home, you're likely better off charging every night, so you're always ready for the next day. While it's not as convenient as my level two wall box, I could also use the portable charging cable that came with my car. You plug one end into a regular 120 volt receptacle and you plug the other end into the charging port. You go to grandma's for Thanksgiving, you can use the cable there. The Tesla portable cable supplies just 1.3 kilowatts, 12 amps at 120 volts. However, if you can leave it plugged in for 12 hours, for example, overnight, that will raise the battery charge by about 15.6 kilowatt hours, which would be enough to power my car for about 60 miles. Note that most EVs aren't as efficient as Teslas, but about 50 miles of mixed driving could be expected. Now, if you run your battery down to around 10%, it'll take a really long time to charge back up to 80 or 90 percent if you're using a low power charger. People who badmouth 120 volt portable chargers cite excessive charging times to go from zero to 100 percent, adding 250 to 300 miles of range. But that's not a realistic scenario. Most people would only need to add no more than 20 to 40 miles of range for their daily drive. So, how far do you drive every day? Certainly, portable charges are not going to be a long-term solution for most people. But they're another option.
Now, if you're going on a road trip, you may want to charge to 100% before leaving, and you may need to stop at a public charger along the way. If you live in an apartment and park on the street, you'll also have to use public chargers, unless your employer provides charging at work. If you really have to use public chargers regularly, then visit a channel like Tom Malagny's State of Charge. There's a link in the description below. Educate yourself about how public chargers will work with your particular car. It'll save you a lot of aggravation. But if your daily driving is more modest and you have a garage or a driveway, charging an electric car can be really simple and extravagantly convenient. Thanks for watching.